Hello everybody, my name is Dave, and today I'm going to be talking about the three-phase non-terminal dual voltage motor in the Y configuration. Uh, these graphs that I have behind me, I've got them up there. I'm getting ready to go out on a previous service call I was at. It's back over to a gun range where I was where they had four motors. So I got one of them replaced where when I was over there uh, doing my service checks, I found that uh, overloads was bypassed to the motors. And the motor that failed, it also had a bad contactor. Uh, it's probably what started the problem, but the overload is what finished it off because it wasn't working. So it was nothing to take it offline. I also know that some of the other motors was replaced, and from time to time they had to replace fuses. So it pretty much tells me that uh, there's probably been several times we've had single phase starts and runs on these motors over there. So I want to get over and get the windings, get the readings done, bring them back, put them on the board, and take a look at them and uh, see where we go from there. If something needs to be replaced, we will get them replaced. Uh, but we just want to talk a little bit about this. Once you draw this a couple times, you'll get to get it down. It's a very simple thing to draw. Uh, it's just a Y configuration. But I'll show you how to number it, make it easy. Uh, you just start at the top. You go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, now you got your motor, you got all your terminals laid out and uh, wired. So just remember, always go clockwise and start on the outside and work your way in. When I go up and do an ohm test, let's say for, let's just say that this, this set of windings between two and five, let's just say it may be a three. So I'm looking for a three here, I'm looking for a three here, at least close within maybe a 10% of each other. But when I do uh, my 7 to my 8, these windings are the exact same size as this one, so I'm going to have two of them. So I'm just going to be looking at maybe a, trying to get a 6 or close to a 6, between 7 and 8, 7 and 9, and 9 and 8, because it's just adding two of these windings together. Uh, what I'm going to be using today to do my mega ohms is going to be a M500. So when I come back, it's a Supco, when I come back, if everything is high resistance, which I hope to see. I'm just gonna come back and put a check mark in them. I'm not gonna be uh, putting any numbers or anything down, but if I do get a number or something, you know, this, this list is good, caution and bad. Hopefully everything is uh, good. And like I say, if it's, if it's a rut above, I don't get any number, I'll just do a check mark. If I do get a number, I'll go ahead and put it in. Uh, to keep me straight, I made, I made a, a sheet. This is what I use when I do my winding tests. This way, as I'm going down through my tests, I can log it and I don't forget any of my terminal leads. This kind of keeps me on a path until I get all the way through. I got this, if, uh, I need to you know, see where my numbers, what lines are, are uh, actually tied together. So that's about all I can say as far as that goes. At the end of the video, I'll, I'll take and put this sheet up. That way, if you have a cell phone or something, you could screenshot it and go from there. And I uh, will... See you soon. Hey guys, uh, I'm back to that service call and I'm on my last motor. I already uh, checked the other two. So I want to go ahead and get finished up with this and check. Uh, I'm back in the cover so I can actually turn the camera on because the wind's blowing like 20 mile an hour out there. It's still cold. So, but uh, I want to go ahead and get this last one checked. It won't take me too long. But I got my check sheet here where I can go down through and see all my. Uh, which ones leads I need to do. For this in here, I'm doing a one to four. That's so giving me a 0 0.8. Next one, we're gonna check is a two to five. Alrighty, so I don't seem to have any issues with this motor, so I'm gonna get it uh, wired back up, get it turned back on. Gonna take and change these clips on it real quick, put the correct clips that's supposed to be on it. It's not the right wire running out through here, but it's gonna have to do for now. But uh, I'm gonna go ahead and get it uh, straightened out, get it uh, wired back up, get it turned back on, and we'll uh, I'll see you back at the whiteboard. Okay, guys, I am back, and it feels great to be out uh, that cold wind that was out there. Uh, I got all my readings up here. Everything looked pretty good. I uh, done my mega ohm tests from all my windings. 
Everything looked good there. Didn't get any readings through my Supco 500. I've done my Megaum test for my windings of ground. Everything looked good on there, so didn't get any readings on that. Uh, motor A, uh, all the uh, resistance tests look good on that. Motor C, resistance test looks good on that. Motor B, the resistance test on that was higher than the other two motors. The other two motors within range, so I'm not sure if this is a different motor than the other two. Uh, I'll uh, place an name tag up on it, but it was running, I think, I, when I started up and checked the amperage draw on it, it was running around 4.2, and I think a uh, load on it's uh, 7.38 on that, but that may be a little high. I did smell a little bit of smoke, uh, burnt smell inside of that motor, but that could be, when I opened that motor up, this was my terminal block that I had. This is the terminals, the way that it was laid out, because I went ahead and removed my wires so I could check my terminals. And this is how they was numbered. They was laid out exactly like this, but it was wired in this configuration, the low voltage uh, configuration was how it was wired. So I went ahead and I used this configuration to get these readings because the wiring on it all looked the same as the other motors. It's just they was all connected to different terminals. So uh, I did call manufacturer and talk to them about that. They said that probably this motor here was a rebuilt motor, even though it come from 2017. It, uh, it was probably a rebuilt motor and somebody stuck a single phase terminal block on top of that motor. And that's why these windings, these terminals are misnumbered. But like I say, I still went ahead and just used this visual to do my terminals. I just pretty much turned it into that. But these are my readings I got, and it was a, uh, uh, kind of a burnt smell on that motor. So I will uh, talk to the customer and see what they want to do about possibly getting that replaced. Uh, I can't think of anything else to tell you. And I'm like say uh, everything went real well. All the motors are up and running. The overloads are back the way they're supposed to be. I may talk to them, you know, maybe in the future throw some uh, phase monitors on them, just so motor watchers or whatever, motor, motor savers, whatever they may be, they're pretty cheap, that stuff's pretty cheap these days, electronics. But uh, that's about all i got to show you. I hope you learned a little bit of something, and thanks for watching.